Well, welcome Luminous Church to Church Online. We are so excited. And this is Thursday Night Live. And we got, we got about 20, 25 people here socially distanced at Luminous Church. And man, it's going to be incredible what God has. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm excited to communicate God's word to you. And if you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 10 is where we're going to be um, right now in this moment. And, and, and we've been going for uh, an abbreviated amount of time, um, mainly because you're watching on your phones, you're watching on your TVs, and wherever you're watching from, I know that it's a challenge to just stay focused. But I want to encourage you to stay focused. And maybe you're opening your faith kit with your kids right now, and they're coloring a sheet, or, or maybe you're opening your Bible and your journal, and you're just ready to receive God's word. Thank you for being here and being present. I know that God's going to do something incredible right now. I, I, I don't know if you've been like me, but I oftentimes when people come to my house and I, I see them and usually they have a clipboard and maybe a hat with a short bill on and they start walking to my front steps, I immediately start turning off the lights and hiding. It might be only one who does that because I know what that person represents. That person represents solita solicitation. They, they represent a long conversation. And so there are often times that I hide and do not answer the door. Am I I alone in that? Am I the only one who does that? I, I know that a lot of us do. If I were to be honest, there have been times when it just isn't somebody with a clipboard or a short bill hat with short shorts coming to my front door. Sometimes it is people that I actually know, but I just may not have the emotional energy for that person in that moment. Can I get an amen? Are there any confessions out there? That you've been hiding, maybe, from somebody who's been coming to your doorstep, and they're ready to talk and engage, and you pretend like you're not home. Now, for all of you out there who don't have garages, I'm sorry, because you, you, you are busted because your car is in the driveway. They know you are home. I, it is true. You know, I, I'm thankful, you know, that in the scripture that we're going to read is that we read that there is somebody, no matter who comes to the door, he's going to open the door. And this is the beautiful thing about Jesus, and it actually what separates me from him. You see, God's character is uniquely different than my own. You see, there's these things in God and who Jesus is that, that I cannot measure up to, that I fall short in oftentimes. But he is the one who constantly opens the door for those who seek him, for those who look to him. Let's read this, John chapter 10 tonight, verse 7. So Jesus again said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I came that they may have life and life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me, I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. Two weeks ago, we talked about the good shepherd, and it was a significant moment. And in that sermon, I wanted to desperately get to this last verse that I just read. In fact, I don't know if you've ever communicated in some platform or maybe met with a friend or, or maybe you wanted to say something, but you didn't get to say it in the moment. Anybody out there wish that they could say something, but they didn't get to say it in the moment. Maybe they forgot. Maybe they ran out of time. Um, maybe, maybe it just slipped. But I really wanted to talk about this last verse two weeks ago. And I, I really think, though, the Lord is saving it for today. That he's saving it for this moment. 
You see, there's some significant things that I want to talk about um, right now as you're watching. First off, I want to talk about Jesus being the door, that he is the door. And this is very good news for us. Let me explain what the door means. The door was when a shepherd was taking the sheep out in the pasture. And if you know sheep at all, if you've ever been around sheep, I, I'm, I'm not many farmers listen to us at Luminous Church, I'm sure. But, um, but if there are any, then you know what I'm talking about. But sheep are not very intelligent. They're not very smart. They, they, in fact, they will graze with their head down, not looking for the, the thing that could destroy them and devour them. Uh, if one sheep jumps off a cliff, all the other sheep are going to follow and jump off the cliff as well. This is what sheep do. Sheep do not know their way back to the sheep pen. They're not like a, a, a like homeward bound. That's an old school dog movie. Um, they're not like a dog who can find its way back home or find their way back home. No. Once a sheep is lost, it is lost. It, it is done. And so they, they are goners. And it's why the shepherd is so important for the sheep. And I love the fact that Jesus uses this illustration as us being the sheep because the truth is there is no way for you and me to find the kingdom without the shepherd. There is no way for us in, in, in our ways of looking down. We think we know what's right. We think we know what's best. But in the end, as Romans would say, it leads to death. This oftentimes is what happens to us. And so we have a great shepherd, a good shepherd who leads us. And the shepherds would grab their sheep and they would go to the sheep pen. And, and, and what they would do is they would stack all these rocks, making a fence, making a perimeter. And, and maybe it was a side of a cliff and they would, they would protect the sheep and they would herd the sheep through one entrance. And when Jesus says, I am the door, it's not like maybe a rancher who has a fence or a gate that opens up. No, when Jesus says, I am the door, literally the shepherd was the door for that pen that that the shepherd would lay in front of the entry of the pen, literally being the door for the sheep. That there was no way in and no way out except through the shepherd. And this is significant for us because Jesus says in his character, I am the good shepherd and I'm looking for the sheep and I'm going to bring them in the pen and I will be the door or the way for these sheep to enter in. This is what Jesus has done for you and me. He is the door. He is the way. This, there's no other way except in him and through him and by him. He says he's the door. Using that article on purpose, not a door, because there's only one way into the kingdom. And it's through Jesus. I, I love this moment because as we look at the, um, Jesus and as he's talking about being the good shepherd and being the door, he goes down and he says this. I am the good shepherd in verse, verse 14, and I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me, I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And then verse 16, this is God's character right here. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. I wanted to talk about that scripture because, as you all know, we are in a very difficult time right now. Where there is, there is literally a spirit of racism that exists in our country and has existed globally. It is an evil spirit and it, and it causes humans to do evil things. Such as murder and bigotry. Such as murdering a, a, a man like Ger George Floyd and, and so many other people. And so I want to just tell you, as we're looking at the character of Jesus, it is our intention to know his heart in these situations. Jesus' heart has always been for all people. That Jesus loves all people and he's created them equal and he's breathed life into all men, no matter what culture they may be. 
And that's including even black lives. Jesus loves black people. He loves different races, different ethnicities, different cultures. Jesus has created everybody in his image. And in this moment, this is significant because Jesus is saying, I'm not just coming after the Jew. I'm just not coming to earth to rescue the Israeli people. I'm coming for all people. There are sheep that have yet to be reached, that I've come for, that I love, that I adore, and I will bring them, as Jesus just said, into one flock, that there would be one group of people, that ultimately there would be one race of people, and that's the people of God, in the kingdom of God. This is Jesus' heart. It always has been his heart. And the truth is, is that there are many, many things trying to steal, kill, and destroy the people of God and other people right now. Racism is one of those. I, I liken this season to a season of a funeral. Obviously, there is a national-wide funeral as we mourn the life of an individual, but it's not just the life of one individual. We've mourned the lives of many individuals who've been killed unjustly through police brutality or through other means. And I'm telling you that that is not God's heart. I liken it to a funeral because the truth is we're all grieving. This past Sunday, our directors and staff at Luminous Church got together on a phone call and we were able to um, talk openly with one another about how we are feeling. And the truth is, we all feel differently right now. You can't stereotype somebody's feeling in this moment. You can't assume how somebody's feeling, nor should you tell somebody how to feel in a moment of grief. I I've done several funerals as a pastor. It's always a great opportunity to do that, to be able to celebrate somebody's life who's lived an amazing life, a great life, and be able to help people be comforted in those situations and be able to minister to people the best I know how. But one thing I know about a funeral, there are all sorts of emotions that happen in a funeral. There is, there is emotions of anger. There's emotions of depression. There's moments where people are withdrawing and there's some people who just want to talk. There are so many different expressions in grief that we can't quantify them, nor should we in a particular moment. I'm not here in this moment as you're watching me to tell you how to feel, how to grieve. You see, I understand that in our grief, there's many people who are doing things differently. Some are walking and doing protests. Some joined us last night for a citywide prayer and worship night at Travis Park. Some of us are staying in our homes. Some of us are helping other people understand why there's grief. And there's other people who don't have the capacity to help people understand right now. I'm telling you, we're not to dictate how people should or should not respond in the middle of grief. But the most powerful thing that I have witnessed in a funeral, the most amazing thing is not what is said and what is not said, but it's showing up. You see, any time that I've lost a loved one or I facilitate a funeral of somebody else, there was power in the presence of the people who showed up. There was power in the presence. It wasn't what you said or what you didn't say. It wasn't how you articulated things. And I'll tell you what, sometimes we shouldn't say anything. But it was the power of showing up, of being present. Here's the great news is the Holy Spirit is already present for those who are grieving right now. The Holy Spirit has already come and Jesus would say this, I've come for other sheep. I've come for other people and other cultures and ethnicities and, and other colors. I've come for all people and I am coming 
not just in this moment and being present now, but I'm sending my Holy Spirit to be present in all situations, in all circumstances. I'm coming and I'm calling out to people. The greatest hope that we have in this moment, the greatest thing that we can turn to is not ourselves or our articulation or our favorite hashtag or anything else. And I'm not saying don't do any of that. But the greatest thing that we could turn to is Jesus. We need Jesus more than ever in our church, in our lives, in our people. We need reform. We need, we need laws that treat each other with civility. We need, we need to treat each other equally. We, we need what has happened for those who have been persecuted for centuries we need we need fair treatment we need all that stuff but what we need as well is we need the gospel of jesus we need the gospel because the gospel is really will transform a heart i haven't shared this story much but i'm going to share it in this moment i i come from a white family and in that white family, many of them were in the South, and many of them are racist and were racist. I grew up racist. I grew up with, with not liking other skin colors. I remember um, talking badly about certain people and certain people groups. But it was a church that stood for reconciliation that changed my life. You see, when I was 17 years old in 1999, I was at a church called Mid-Cities. It's a part of an Every Nation church. In fact, what Luminous Church is a part of. And I was in a service. And I remember in that moment, there was a reconciliation service where they were talking about race and the spirit of racism and how it was wrong. And, and the Holy Spirit started convicting Ben Chapman in a way that broke me in a way that changed my life. And there was this moment where they had um, different people on the altar line of different races and different nationalities up on the altar. And th there was black men and white men on the altar. And the pastor said this, if you have a spirit of racism and you have dealt with this, but you're being stirred by the Holy Spirit and you want healing and you want to be changed. Come forward. At 17 years old, my heart was coming out on my throat. I was, my heart was beating so fast. And I knew that the Holy Spirit said, you need to go forward and you need to be healed. It was in that moment that I went forward and there was a man named Clint Berry that I went to. And I just confessed. I confessed my sins. Confess your sins one to another, the Bible would say. And you'll find healing. I confess my sins in that moment. And in that moment, he held me as I cried. I cried and tears were flowing out. And I just started welling. And he started speaking life over me as a black man who is a father and speaking life. And in that moment, I was changed. I've never been the same since that moment. It was the power of the gospel that allowed my life to forever change. You see, this is amazing because in that moment, Clint Berry was a welcome mat to the door that I needed to go through. You see, in moments like this, in moments throughout our history, in whatever sin that you may be carrying, in whatever you may be dealing with, that the people of God are called to be these welcome mats to the door that Jesus is. You see, Clint, in that moment, he was allowing me and taking me into the presence of God and taking me through the door, through Jesus, through his blood and being reconciled back to himself. And that moment was freeing. It was liberating. And all of a sudden, I knew what this verse was saying. I have come for sheep that they would come into one fold and they would be one people and they would be united and they would see each other as the people of God. It changed me forever, forever. 
It's why I'm so adamant about it. It's one of our heartbeats because you see, whatever you've been healed from, you want to offer healing to other people. Whatever your story is, whether you've been freed from alcoholism or depression or anxiety or you've been freed from anger or abuse or racism, whatever it is, it's almost like God gives you a mandate and says, I want you to be a welcome mat for somebody else. So I'm using our platform here at Luminous Church to say this. If you have dealt with racism... And you have dealt with that and you know that that is you. This is a moment and this is your welcome mat to come to Jesus. That you would repent of your sins. That you would repent of your wrongdoing. And that you would be healed by the blood of Jesus. And that he would give you a space. And he would invite you into a family. I am so thankful that our church... Has taken a risk every Sunday over the last six years to come through these doors and be a multicultural church that fights for people, that loves people, that will not stop being a voice for people who are unheard or unseen. We've always stood up for the oppressed. We're a church that is going to bring healing and freedom to people who are down and out and who are held captive by bondage, whether it is racism or alcoholism or you, you are, have been in, in a situation where you've been abusing people. I'm telling you, this is going to be a place where you're going to be set free and forever changed for those who've been in lust. And those who have seen themselves in, in perversion, Jesus is going to heal you. You got to come through the door. You have to come through the door. And this is your welcome mat. So I invite you to come through that. And Caleb's going to close us out in a song to minister to us as we could just reflect on this. And I would just say to all my, all my white friends that this is a good time to self-evaluate. To ask yourself if there's anything in you. Think about David. David say this. If there's anything unclean in me, oh Lord. If there's anything unclean in me. If there's anything that I've done, any wrongdoing in me. Would you make my heart clean? Forgive me. And make me new. Jesus wants to make you new. For those who are hurt right now and grieving. I have to tell you that the Holy Spirit wants to comfort you. He loves you. He loves you. He has not given up on you. He shows no partiality. He is for you and not against you. He is a just God, a true God, a faithful God, and he is there for you. Please, I desperately plead to you, don't turn your back on him. He wants to be there for you. And through all our pain and our hurt and through this season and however long it takes, we will keep fighting for the goodness of God, for the greatness of God. We will keep fighting. I'm going to pray for you. If you wouldn't mind, just lift your hands up wherever you are. Maybe raise them in a posture of receiving. Jesus, I pray that you would be the door for us. In your house, there are many rooms. In your kingdom, there is a place for everybody who's crying out to you. If we seek you, we'll find you. Jesus, I think you're the door. And you forgive sins as we come over the threshold. You forgive sins as we go through the veil, as Jesus has spilt his blood for us so that we could be renewed and changed. And we no longer have to live in the bondage of our ancestors. We no longer have to live in bondage and and in this situation, Lord, I pray that you would free racism. I pray that you would free victim mentalities. I pray that you would free those who are hurt right now and those who are in pain. I pray, Jesus, that you would be enough and you would be the source that we need.
Jesus, I pray that there would be no substance abuse. I pray against giving ourselves over to anything just so we could continue to feel numb. I pray, God, that we would just press into you in a powerful way. And would we feel the presence of God right now? And would you heal? And would you change? And would you renew right now? In the name of Jesus, we're asking this. Amen. Well, let's receive this song and let's worship together. Let's give a hand to Ben for an amazing word from the Lord this tonight. Thank you, brother. And I just want to come in agreement with him, with this song, and with the Lord. Um, in this time, all of us are feeling differently, but we're all hurting. And I think the Lord's hurting too. And that this grieves the Lord. And that it makes him angry. It makes him sad. But God can process things that we can't. He can feel that sadness and that anger. But also compassion and mercy at the same time. And he sees all the angles that we don't see. And with that, he brings consolation. So I just hope that this song bring some of that consolation from the Lord because it's been speaking to me. It's called For Everyone Born. And at first, I just want you to listen, but as you start to learn it, you can sing along with me. In God, will the light, we are creators of justice. In joy, Just 
justice Justice in joy Justice in joy Sing with me, God will delight blessed. Join us on the Zoom call for dialogue, conversation. If you need prayer, the altar's open. Ask for prayer on, on the Zoom call today. It'll be amazing. We love you. Be blessed.